Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's well. <laughs> to any um, Ukrainian, Joe, I think, don't think there's any Ukrainians <laughs> in the room. Um, <laughs> okay. Funny. Okay. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I think if the cameras are ready at the back, we'll kick off with Alex from the BBC. Hi, Michael. Hi. Um, your unbeaten start to the season was ended warm. What did you say to the players after that game? And what's the message ahead of the match against Shakhtar? Well, very clear. Put a bit of perspective into the situation. Uh, obviously, we want to win in any context. Uh, the reality is that we have made that context very difficult to ourselves. Um, it was very difficult already with the amount of players that we had out and the schedule and the games that we had to play. But that's the reality. And uh, for that game, we didn't get away. Um, with it, we could have done, and it could have been a very different narrative. The right is we didn't. And now the context is that we have lost one game in six months. And, okay, now we have to win again, win the context that we have lost for the first time in six months. So, let's show it. That's three red cards in Premier League yeah. games. There's been lots of talk around your side's uh, disciplinary record. Do you think mm. your team has a problem with, with discipline? Well, I mean, playing with 10 men, obviously, there is an issue. Uh, the truth is, when you analyze the three very different actions um, and the outcome of them, uh, the reasons are very different. Regardless of that, uh, we cannot continue to play with 10 men, especially at this level, and you see how we're struggling. All the teams have to win football matches when you want to do it against 10 men for 65 minutes. The tax becomes almost impossible, so we need to eradicate that, it's clear. Uh, why, the reason, and how, it doesn't matter. We have to focus that it has to happen. You have to play with our Martin Odegaard and mm. Bukayo Saka. Are they any closer to being back and available? And do you, if they're not, do your team have to learn how to play with them? They are closer and they're both progressing really well. Martin is still not fit uh, with Bukayo. Uh, let's see how he feels today and, and the training session that we have later on. Call from Sky. Mikel, you mentioned uh, that that was your first defeat in, in 17 matches. In terms of the bigger picture, did that form part of your discussions with the players since the Bournemouth game? And, and also, what have you said to them about eradicating those kind of mistakes that the likes of you and Declan Rice have, have talked about after that? Well, I think we are already aligned, you know, that uh, we cannot continue to, to play with 10 men. That's fine. Easier to get it, uh, to say that, to get it done, because there are very specific moments that um, have produced that situation. But uh, is that, is reacting, you know, you have a defeat. Okay, it's part of the game, it's part of a sport. It happened in very specific conditions as well. Uh, let's move on, take that pain that we still have in that tummy, use it for tomorrow night. Yeah, it's obviously a quick turnaround for another game. Yeah. Talking about your opponents for this, Shakhtar Donetsk, how much sympathy do you have for them in the way that they're having to prepare for games mm. at the moment, given the circumstances they're in? Yeah, obviously a lot of a lot of sympathy uh, for the situation that they are in, you know, and obviously. How can I imagine, especially speaking to Alice, how affects that situation, not only to yourself, but uh, for the whole country, your families, the whole environment, and the incredible attitude that they are having towards the situation, and, and again, the things that they have to put in place to be able to, to continue to play football matches at, at this level and compete in the way they do. It's, uh, it's remarkable, and uh, yeah, we'll welcome them uh, here tomorrow in the best possible way. And away from the Champions League, can I... Just double check, are you planning to appeal the William Saliba red card? And, and That's more, I leave that more to the club uh, to understand the circumstances and as well other examples that are very clear in, in the same position and uh, they will have to decide it. Ian, talk to Hi, Rick, how are you? Hi, very good, thank you. I um, mentioned there about Shakhtar and, and the way that they have to prepare and I mean, it shows, doesn't it, that football is important but actually it's not the most important thing in the world. No, clearly not, uh, and especially when you're comparing with the situation that they are in. Uh, but as well, I think they have decided, you know, to use football with a lot of positive things that brings to life. 
uh, in a really powerful way. And uh, I think it's, it's remarkable the way they have managed uh, and managing the situation and, and the unity of the country and yeah, the capacity of a sport as well to bring joy to people's life. And uh, that's something that uh, we have to be very conscious of. You can't show any sense on the pitch. And, and after Saturday, I guess tomorrow is absolutely vital for you to, to go and win another football match and get another unbeaten 17 game, six month unbeaten run on track. Yeah, we have to start tomorrow, obviously. Uh, the desire is there. We want to desperately play these kind of matches. Um, and we know, and the atmosphere is going to be terrific tomorrow night. So uh, let's produce that and, and end right to win the game. And last one for me. You mentioned this a couple of times, and now you can't play foot matches and win foot matches with 10 men. Are you going to have to change the way, or are you going to have to ask the team to change the way they play then? Because you have had a lot of red cards since you come to the club. Maybe that's because you wanted them to be more aggressive and to show a, a tougher side, but maybe they're going a little bit too far with that? Well, I think that, for example, what happened in those three cases, nothing to do with aggression, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, yeah, everybody's got his own opinion. Uh, we want to be super competitive when when we are, and, and we show that is great. Uh, when you show it and it doesn't go your way and you lose, it's something else. It's, it's part of the judgment. Simon, even standard? Okay, I'll ask you, is Julian Timber close to playing tomorrow? And if not tomorrow, do you think he'll be back in the I think it's going to be close, obviously. We have to see how he deals with uh, with training with the whole group because he hasn't done that yet, but uh, he will be pretty close, hopefully. What's the issue with it? Is it something to do with the knee injury before? Or is it something different to... No, it was a muscular injury. And can I just ask, well, see, with fans, though, there's a lot of, um, sort of clamour and hype around Ethan getting, getting more minutes and getting what they've seen off the bench and the cameos. How difficult is it for you when you've got a talent like that who's 17 to sort of Say so I'll just throw you in from the start, like, <laughs> to try and hold you back. Give him a year, the teenage boy. I think it's identifying moment, understanding uh, where he is, where the team is, and what is the the optimal moment to throw a player in in that context. He's already done a lot in a very short period of time, so let's take it a step by step and make sure those steps are consistent and and can allow him to grow in the manner and form that we want him in, in the team. Claire. Hi, Mikael. Hi. Uh, on Saturday, you changed your midfield setup a bit. You had that thing going with Leo and, and Kai up top, and you, you changed it to bring Mikael into midfield. I know it's kind of difficult to analyse because after half an hour, obviously, the game changes. But how, how did you think that was going before the red card? Well, it was different, obviously, because Leo has been playing more centrally. But uh, Gabi, obviously, he had a, a calf issue with the national team. And uh, and he came back and he wasn't fit enough to start the match, and especially what happened last year. When a similar circumstance, we lost him for five or six weeks and we didn't want to do that. So we have to adapt that and meant that we have to adapt as well our midfield. And there are options. Very difficult to, very difficult to, to have a proper assessment because I expected the first 15, 20 minutes of Bournemouth away to be in a certain way that plan to. And we have to let the brownie settle a little bit to see a little bit more things. Uh, but yeah, there are different and new connections that obviously with the injuries that we have, we have to try. It's like the first time we played Leo and Kai, I heard a lot of things that while well, we're playing 4 4 2 and this connection, and then it was flowing and it was magnificent. So things need time in terms of um, unit connections, and uh, probably the, yesterday or the other day's game is not the best one to analyze and take a lot of um, things from it. Just one on Alex as well. It's obviously. Big game for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, he's played just 10 minutes since the first weekend of the season. I know he's had an injury which just gets up for a long time, but how has his role changed now? Because there's so much competition at the places in the fullback position, and he was so important when he first came in. And maybe he, at least from the outside, it seems like his influence on the team has diminished slightly, but how big a role does he still have to play for you then? Yeah, hopefully a big one. Uh, obviously, we need him fit. Uh, you know, availability is a big factor to maintain consistency. And uh, obviously, last year we had quite a lot of issues with that. And the start of the season again, hopefully he's now fit. Uh, we're going to start to use him. He's going to start to impact the team in the manner that he can, which is really powerful as well. And um, that's what we're hoping. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hi. Nice to move back just a little bit. But last week, I was just wondering, I think he was joining your coaching staff in the September international break when there was, um, I guess, less international players around. Um, and I was wondering, in that men's coaching setting, what you might have saw from him? Did you see anything you liked from him? 
Well, obviously, that's a collaboration that we had the same with Mehmet every time that uh, that we are dealing with a lot of academy players, uh, and he was involved. He's been great in everything, you know, in in terms of supporting the first uh, team, in terms of bringing ideas, in terms of collaborating with anything that we wanted. Uh, I know him. We play together. We have a good relationship, and uh, yeah, let's see. And in terms of, I guess, poaching first team players and academy players, is the skill set a little bit different? Um, what you might need to give to an 18 year old compared to a 25, 26, 27 year old? Yeah, but uh, every player is different at the end, and every nationality. And um, the education and culture that each of them have is different. But Jack is very experienced because he's played in the game for such a long time. So you have to have that skill as well to to connect with your, with your teammates and with your coaches. And they are all different, different ages, different backgrounds, different nationalities. And I think that's a, a big strength of him. Okay, guys, that finishes the live section. We'll now go to 10.30 tonight.